What happened on Saturday? What in the world happened at the end of Saturday's basketball game between Duke and Virginia? Kyle Filipowski fouled, but no foul called. The ACC issues a statement. Meanwhile, Duke has to flush that away and get ready for a game with Notre Dame. We talk about all of that on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Hi, everybody. Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome back into another episode of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson. It's so great to have you here with us today on Valentine's Day, Tuesday, February 14th, 2023. We hope that everyone has a happy Valentine's Day with your loved ones. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to follow and subscribe to the Locked On Blue Devils podcast for free wherever you get your podcast. Leave us a five-star rating and review and watch our show daily each and every day on YouTube, Locked On Blue Devils. Hit that subscribe button as we continue to climb towards 1,000 subscribers. We're getting closer and your support means the absolute world. Follow me on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore and follow the show on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. Without further ado, let me bring on Josh Cox here for today's proceedings in the show. What a game we had against Virginia on Saturday. A non-foul call at the end of the game, and Duke unfortunately loses in overtime by seven against the Virginia Cavaliers. The foul is the talk of the college basketball world, and we're going to break it all down here, Josh, on today's show. And also, we got to get ready for another game as Duke prepares to take on Notre Dame. Happy Valentine's Day to you and your family, Josh. Hope you're doing well. Hey, thanks, JJ. Thanks for having me on. And uh, yeah, what an what an ending, man. What an ending to that game on Saturday. Uh, unfortunate ending, but like you said, I mean, it's a quick turnaround. And here we sit tonight hosting Notre Dame, who admittedly, you know, has struggled throughout the season, Mike, the whole Mike Bray trans- transition and all of that. But at the end of the day, Duke's got to show up and uh, and win a basketball game tonight after all that. So. so if you haven't seen the play, obviously, uh, it's a tie game at the end of Duke men's basketball game uh, against Virginia. 1.2 seconds are left on the clock. Duke has a sideline inbound. Kyle Filipowski will continue to discuss his play throughout the week, but ultimately is held scoreless in this basketball game, which was very surprising and not what we're accustomed to seeing out of the ACC Freshman of the Year front runner, has a path to the rim, goes up for a dunk, and is fouled on the play, but no call takes place. There's a long review. Did Was the foul before the buzzer, after the buzzer? John Shire's confused. Tony Bennett doesn't know what's going on. Next thing you know, no call. We move into overtime. And look, Virginia won in overtime. Nothing to point to there. However, after the fact... The conference, the ACC, issues a statement saying there was a foul. Filipowski should have been awarded two free throws with no time left on the clock, a chance to win the game. How yeah. did this happen? Yeah, man. I mean, so let's let's be real, right? We Duke uh, anti Duke people have often said that Duke gets the benefit, oftentimes, of 50 50 uh, calls, <clears throat> and, and whether that's true or not is kind of irrelevant to this specific thing. So first of all, for Duke haters or for Duke fan, whatever, like this is different because you had a foul, you had a whistle blown, and then you had a go to the monitor. So there must be undisputable video evidence that would have these these referees change this call. And so what they what even even in the ACC statement I still don't believe that they have really admitted what happened. He was fouled before the clock went out. I mean, there's photo evidence of his hand, the arm, and his side at 0.2 seconds, okay? Not to – we won't even discuss the fact that they started the clock a tad bit early before he even touched the ball. A little home cooking there. (laughs) Um, But but he was fouled before. And here's the thing. It doesn't really matter about – what happens after that? Because 
once he is up in the form of shooting and the ball, it doesn't matter about the clock at that point. Once the foul occurs, it does not matter. Anything, everything else stops mattering. So at the end of the day, I, I think it was unique in, uh, that the ACC actually came out and said something um, about it and admitted the fault, even though I don't believe they truly admitted everything uh, in that statement, but they admitted the fault there. That doesn't typically happen. Um, so that does say something, but at the end, but you know what? We took the L no matter what. And so like they could come out and say whatever they want to. It's like the Duke Miami football game a few years ago. You can come out and make any kind of statement you want to. There was still an L uh, right. in the column there. So, <laughs> you yeah, know, it- I-, I hate it. John Shire, you know, we could talk about his reaction, but he did make the statement, you know, you can't give up so many points in the paint and like, uh, and, and turn the ball over. And I mean, do get 18 turnovers, giving them 20 points um, off of turnovers. You can't, you can't do that. Um, you can't have, I'm going to get this correct here. You cannot have Mark Mitchell, Kyle Filipowski, Derek Lively, the second and Ryan Young combine. Those are your bigs combine for a grand total of 11 points. All four of those guys can't happen. That can't happen. And so here, here was my thing. How fortunate was Duke to even be in that situation? Yeah. On the road at UVA uh, with their best player in Kyle Filipowski, literally putting a goose egg on the board. Um, so, you know, and the, uh, there's a lot we could talk about. Um, but, I mean, the fact that the ACC came out and said what they said, uh, I would be interested to see if those referees officiate any games this week. I'm going to kind of keep my eye on that and see what happens. Uh, interesting to see if, they, if either, any of those guys – uh, do any any games in the ACC tournament, things like that. Uh, because, you know, at the end of the day, there should be some accountability on this stuff. And I, I get it. Judgment calls are difficult to make. And I would never hold anyone accountable for a judgment call. What I will hold someone accountable for is when you go to the monitor and you make the decision that you make after looking at it slow motion and knowing what was supposed to be the rule. Right. So. Yeah, no, that's that's tough. And, and the statement being released makes it so difficult. It's like, in a way – why even say that? But then you're wanting to save face. You're wanting to make sure, hey, you know, we're in a spot where, uh, you know, we, we need to make that announcement that, hey, we missed this call. We messed up. But at the same time, the result doesn't change, Josh. It's not like, all right, here's the next day. We release this statement. Everybody go back to Charlottesville and, you know, let's put Kyle Filipowski at the free throw line. If he makes one of these Duke wins with no time – doesn't do anything at the end of the day. Duke has the loss, and uh, unfortunately now they've got to find a way to battle back from it. There were some positives to take away from Mm -hmm. in this game against Miami. There really were, and we'll talk about some of those things after our first time out here on today's program. Locked on Blue Devils today is brought to you by our friends over at Built Bar. Are you looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories? Then you got to try a Built Bar. Everyone's goal should be to eat healthier. It helps you feel better in every way possible. And now eating healthier is tasty when you consume Built Bar. They've got so many amazing flavors that you could choose from like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. They're also covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate, and it's good for you. Only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. We always talk about going to Built.com to place your order, but you can also now go to your local Walmart or Sam's Club to buy Built Bar. Absolutely outstanding to have that in-person opportunity to walk away with Built Bar and add them to your pantry today. Built Bar is a proud sponsor of the Locked On Blue Devils podcast. Welcome back into today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. I'm JJ Jackson alongside my buddy Josh Cox from Duke Football Talks Section 17 podcast. And Josh, we take a look once again at Duke's game against Virginia over the weekend. 69-62, the Cavaliers win it over the Blue Devils. Uh, The Bigs did not have a strong showing at all for the Duke Blue Devils. But pretty impressive guard performances. An efficient day for Jeremy Roach an efficient day for Tyrese Proctor, and by far and away, the best performance Jacob Grandison has ever had in a Duke uniform. And then also, Dariq Whitehead returns, and there was a stretch in the second half where Dariq Whitehead reminded folks why he's one of the top recruits in the entire country. Yeah, I think we can start where you started, and that's the starting backcourt. Um, Tyrese Proctor and Jeremy Roach seem to have – they seem to be finding uh, a rhythm. 
um, with both of them playing with, you know, Tyrese really playing on the ball uh, more than Jeremy. And I think that's, that's good. It kind of reminds Duke fans of that 2015 squad where you had Tyus Jones um, and, and Quinn Cook kind of back and forth there on the ball. Uh, but I love that Tyrese is playing much better. Tyrese only had three turnovers. I mean, this game, and we know how good defensively Virginia is going to be. Um, and so I, I Always, think you yeah. hit the spot, you hit the nail on the head there um, with the backcourt play. And then um, to see Grandison hit the shots that he hit, um, if I'm not mistaken, all of his points came in the second half, <clears throat> I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And so um, that was really good to see because, you know, sometimes – Jacob gets in the game and and he really you can see man there's your grad transfer there's a guy that can get it done and then other times he gets in the game you're like man what's 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 going on like <laughs> I'm not really sure uh, the thought process there and so it's good to see him have a good game and then Dorit getting back you know I was hoping he was going to come back um, earlier in the week on on Monday's game uh, to kind of get ready for this game but I mean he looked good um, he has the potential and I will say this again as we said a couple weeks ago. If this Duke team is going to make some noise in the tournament, ACC and NCAA tournament, it's going to be because Derek Whitehead elevates his play and becomes a very difficult player to stop. And so if he can become that, I think Duke's ceiling gets pushed higher. And if he can't, I believe Duke is about where they're going to be. And so not to put too much pressure on Derek, but I do feel like he gives us something that we just can't get from any other player. You're exactly right, Josh. And then also, like, if you're watching us here on YouTube, as we do after the games, I've got the box score available for you to take a look at. And let's go all the way across your screen in that plus-minus category. What stands out about Derek Whitehead, Josh? Let me let me oh um oh, my my old uh, old man head there. <laughs> he's the only guy. Oh, he's the only guy with plus. Yeah, plus, plus three. minus. Look at that. Isn't yeah. that why? I mean, and that again. Is. 25 minutes out on the floor for Derek yep. Whitehead. Going into it, you're hearing throughout the game on the ESPN broadcast that uh, Duke is expecting maybe 15 to 20 minutes of action for Whitehead, but he was playing so well. He seemed so comfortable. Yep. They put him out there for more. He is the only player that finished in the positive plus minus category. Yeah, and at 25 minutes, like you said, more, more minutes than what probably Coach Shire and the staff were prepared to play him. And uh, he, listen, he's a game changer on both ends. We knew this coming in. He had a uh, he had a reputation from his high school days of being a, de a defensive stopper. And so the question mark really was how good offensively could he be in, yeah. in, in the college game? And, I mean, when he's been healthy, he has shown he can shoot the three. He's athletic driving to the basket. I mean, he had that one missed dunk earlier this year. Other than that, a very athletic driving to the basket. Um, and I, I just would like, I mean, I would like to see him be able to play hundred percent. Like we've talked about AJ Griffin last year would have been nice to see him play at hundred percent. So I don't know. I don't know that Duke fans are going to get that privilege of yeah. seeing a 100% healthy Derek Whitehead. Uh, what we have seen for the most part this year is a 100% Kyle Filipowski. And again, he is the ACC front runner for freshman of the year, but he had by far his worst game in a Duke uniform, aside from the fact that he should have had an opportunity to shoot some free throws for a chance to win the game. He did go 0 for 2 from the free throw line, 0 for 6 from the floor, one attempt from three-point range, held scoreless, six rebounds, five turnovers, 30 minutes out on the floor. Right now, Josh, what is the narrative of Kyle Filipowski? Well, um, Best player probably targeted by the UVA defense, number one. Um, if you go back and look, um, I was listening or, or watching someone on Twitter. I forget what it was. But if you go back and look at uh, at these high-caliber freshmen and their first ever appearance against UVA, you'll see a similar, maybe not zero points, but you're going to see a similar struggle. Drop-off, um, yeah. A, a major drop-off. So I say that's a little bit of it. Um, I will say this, with all that being said, my man is in the game at the end. I think Duke fans would agree that maybe other than Jeremy Roach, and I would believe some Duke fans would even say ahead of Jeremy Roach, he's still the guy you want tied up with no time on the clock taking those free throws. 
So I think that the, the narrative around Filipowski is that he struggled. Absolutely. But I would say this, if he plays tonight, which I'm still waiting to see, um, you know, we're still waiting to see about that. I know his ankle, he hurt his ankle on that play, but I would expect the next game Filipowski to plays in for him to come out and make sure he silences all those questions. No doubt. Know, puts, you know, put some numbers on the board. So yeah. we'll talk a little bit about Filipowski's status and what to expect from Notre Dame, the next opponent for Duke, a home game inside Cameron Indoor Stadium. And we will have that conversation after our last time out here on Locked On Blue Devils today. Locked On Blue Devils is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. How awesome was that Super Bowl? Boy, oh boy, absolutely loved that Super Bowl and the epic finish we saw between the Chiefs and the Eagles. We hope that you had an opportunity to cash in on that no sweat first bet. If you didn't, no worries. FanDuel is so amazing, you can still Get the no sweat first bet if you're a brand new customer for up to $1,000 as we have reached the midway point of the NBA season. This is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores to who's draining the most three-pointers. It's absolutely awesome. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Final few moments here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. J.J. Jackson alongside Josh Cox from Duke Football Talks Section 17 podcast. Duke and Notre Dame, what stands out to you? Mike Bray's last game in Cameron Indoor Stadium, for all we know. Uh, yeah. His last season, at least at Notre Dame, uh, recently did see some, I believe it was Jeff Goodman, uh, clarify that Bray told him he was not retiring from coaching, but he was resigning from Notre Dame. Notre Dame. So who knows? He may he may have a coach in Cameron again at some point in time with another team. Uh, but it'll be the last time as a Notre Dame head coach. And I mean he's been he's been the class of the league, man. Uh from everything I've heard, um, his personal interactions with people, he's a really awesome guy. And so I think the Mike Bray, I think that's the first narrative here. Um and I'd like to see uh Duke maybe pay a little bit of tribute to him. I don't know what they'll do. I'll be in the house tonight, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'll I'll can report back on that. Um, but that's one thing. And then second thing is you know, Duke cannot with, with the remaining schedule um, Duke has an opportunity, I believe to go five and one uh, four and two, maybe at the worst, you cannot drop a game like this. It's it's it's, you cannot do it. If you want to continue to move up in the rankings in the ACC, um, you cannot afford in the NCAA uh, tournament eyes. You cannot afford to have a terrible loss like this on your resume. Right. I believe this game is very important. And then I think there's also just that like gut check of, man, we, we feel like we should have won the game in Charlottesville. In fact, the ACC statement comes out and basically we should have won the game in Charlottesville, <laughs> but we didn't. And so are you going to let that keep you down? Are you going to struggle uh, tonight or are you going to come out like angry and just, you know, mop the floor with these guys? And so yeah, that's going to be what I'm going to look for. Um, I think once again we're looking at our backcourt for leadership in Roach and Proctor, and I think they're going to steer the ship. And I, I see us bouncing back in a big way tonight. Six games left in the season for Duke, and it starts tonight against Notre Dame. Good point about it being Mike Bray's potential final trip to Cameron Indoor Stadium uh, to remind folks, or maybe inform the younger Blue Devil audience <laughs> that might be listening to us on YouTube. Mike Bray was an assistant coach on Mike Krzyzewski's staff from 1987 until 1995. What does that mean? Well, it means he's got two national championship rings on his yeah. finger and then was the Delaware head coach from 95 until 2000, and he's been with the Fighting Irish since the year 2000 as their head coach. So a big change coming up in the conference going into next basketball season as to who will be that next coach for Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish are not good this season. They have a sub-500 record. The basketball power index on uh, ESPN gives the Blue Devils a 93% chance to win this game. FanDuel and our other friends have, in Las Vegas have the Blue Devils favored by 12 points uh, at home in a game like this. So this has got to be a big opportunity for Duke to get back into the win column and get a win ahead of Saturday's trip to Syracuse to take on the Orange. 
Yeah, I still think now that UNC is uh, right behind us uh, in, in the league standings, I still think from UNC's spot all the way to the top that I, I don't see – I don't know that there's much difference, right, in those teams. I believe your Miamis, your, uh, your Clemsons, uh, your UVAs, and then your Dukes and Carolinas. I don't, I don't know that there's much difference there. Uh, but once again, Duke has to continue winning games. UNC has to continue winning games or, or start winning games, however you want to look at that from their perspective. Um, but all that to say, um, it's, it's ACC basketball, man. We could show up tonight, and those kids from Notre Dame, just like a lot of these kids, it could be their first time playing in Cameron, and, you know, we're going to show them. And, you know, Cameron's rims seem to be, like, really soft. And, you know, who knows? Like, you could have – of course, you're going to have somebody tonight on Notre Dame's team, more than likely, who plays the game of their life. It just is what it is. And so Duke's got to just weather that storm. And I believe if we weather the storm in the first half, you know, we, we go into halftime around a 10-point, you know, lead or whatnot. I think the second half we break it open and, and, and win, you know, comfortably. So – that's what we have to do, and this is part of Coach Shire's part of getting your team, uh, you know, to get over that that debacle on Saturday, and getting them back focused on what they have to do for the last six games, as you mentioned. We'll see what Duke can do tonight. Again, taking on Notre Dame uh, in Cameron Indoor Stadium. You can watch the game on ESPN, and we'll have a full recap show coming your way tomorrow here on Locked On Blue Devils. Hopeful that Duke could find a chance to win. All right, Josh, the Section Seventeen podcast. You guys are putting out interviews with awesome people. Tell me about some of the latest things that you guys have had content-wise. Uh, yeah, last week we released an interview with uh, David Feely. Uh, so that is the Duke's uh, head of strength and conditioning. Uh, if you're a Duke football fan, you know who David Feely is. Um, he is more than just the guy in the weight room, though. If you listen to the interview, you really get to hear his heart um, and how he cares and loves these guys so much. And then also – the fact that Coach Elko has kind of given him a platform within the program and the uh, within the football program to really lead these guys, and so he doesn't take that lightly. And it was a great interview. It's really, uh, in fact, the numbers on that interview have passed the Nina King interview from last year. They've passed the initial Mike Elko interview numbers. So people wanted to hear from David Feely, and then I can give you a little uh, a little. Um, tidbit of what's coming up here. Obviously, we have not recorded this yet, so scheduling could be an issue, but we will be uh, having an in-person interview with the old head coach there, uh, Coach Elko, on uh, within the next couple of weeks. And so we'll be releasing that one as well ahead of spring ball. So Awesome. Looking That's forward great. to that on the football side for sure. Make, make sure you go check out that Section 17 podcast. I got to know, though, so you're talking to a Division One strength and conditioning coach, Josh. The, the fittest of fit people yes. in the world. Did you feel a little self-conscious? Because listening to the interview, I myself, not present in the moment, was a little self-conscious listening to this guy talk. So I had on my list of questions, if you uh-huh. were to take us through a workout, <laughs> what would you do with us? And I did not ask the question. Let's put it that way. He is an intense dude. Fact, we, were like, we were like, Hey man, it was really cool, you know, that you did these uh, the, the the WWE wrestling thing, you, and you had the guys play wolf ball, and you did ice cream. And he's like, "Yeah, I don't really like doing much of that. Like, we did a little bit of it, but I don't like it. I don't I don't like doing that because <laughs> these guys just stay focused and blah blah." You know, like, he's <laughs> intense. Oh, that's he's awesome. Intense. That's so, great. Go give it a listen. Seen that, if you haven't listened to the interview, please go listen to it. I'll give the commercial for JJ as well. Uh, Five star ratings and reviews are really big for Locked On Blue Devils here. Uh, you guys do that uh, on on Spotify. You can do review. Uh, you can do the ratings on Apple ratings and reviews. So Locked On Blue Devils, hit that up, and then a uh, section seventeen podcast. We'd appreciate it as well. Yeah, you guys are on Twitter at Duke FB Talk at Joshua Cox on Twitter as well. Josh, thanks so much for the time, my friend. Look forward to talking to you next week. Okay. All right, JJ, go Duke. That's uh, Josh Cox joining us here on the program today. Uh, also coming up this weekend, we've got NBA All Star Weekend. So. Next week, Josh and I have another NBA check-in scheduled for Blue Devils at the next level. Had a really fun conversation last time around. We'll schedule that again for next week. Be on the lookout for that. That's going to do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.